Hello, hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us for our final session of the um, Artist Conversation Series for the Ilham Art Show. Um, this week we are uh, joined by Encik Rashid from Kalab Kabudayan Ayaan Mahmeri, uh, Samsudin Wahab, um, Sharon Chin, and Yo Chu Kwan. And it will be moderated by art director and artist Eugene Fu. Um, at the end of the session, there will be a special performance um, by musicians Wong Fu Jen and Nisa Adani, which is related to Chu Kuan Yeo's um, uh, video installation as well. So I'll hand it over to you, Eugene. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm Eugene Fu. So I'm an artist myself. Um, I'll start the talk with... Uh, the, the format is going to be, I'm going to allow the artists to introduce themselves and talk a bit about their artwork first uh, at breadth. <laughs> And then we will move on to taking uh, any questions from you guys. All right. So the first art piece is going to be by Samsudin Wahab, um, which is why you're all here because it's outside, right? It's called Ibu Pagun. So um, just follow me. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is uh, Samsudin Wahab's piece, Budin, right? And it's called Ibu Pagun. Um, I think we'll view it from here first before we go around. And I understand you also would like to invite them to actually interact with it. Am I right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So uh, go ahead, uh, introduce your artwork and yourself. Hello. Thank you for coming. My name is Sam Sudin. People call me Budin. This is my work. Um, I call it Ibu Pagun, but if we translate it, 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 can, it can be a mother still. Mother still, right? Mm -hmm. Pagun, right? All right. Um, this one is inspired from the Malay proverb. Kalau in Malay, call it um, "untung sabut timbul, untung batu tenggelam." It's about um, fortune and uh, opportunity. You know what I mean? So uh, during the pandemic, you know, I stay in the studio, and then I I keep doing a lot of sketch about uh, my my new work, and suddenly. I'm a kampung boy, you know what I mean? Uh, in my kampung, we got a lot of coconut, and we have a coconut uh, farm actually. Uh, and then we we plant the coconut, and then we sell the the santa and everything. So, and uh, during the pandemic, um, I'm, I'm, I was thinking about how to manage my my manage the situation and the crisis. So I'm looking to my mother, how he managed things, how come she is, you know, during the pandemic. And you Still, call her, right? I, every time, I you know what I mean? And then uh, it's about how we handle the crisis. And then I'm referred to my mom. So, the, so I, I make a sculpture, the head of a mother, you know, made out of this coconut, koi, sabut, you know. Uh, so, so this is my work. Okay, all right. Okay, so in, in short. Um, yeah, so uh, I think it's quite interesting because uh, the whole idea of mother and in Southeast Asian arts, we always kind of uh, have this representation of mother as uh, the earth as mother and to use a material that came from the earth and of all things, uh, coconut, which I think in our culture, can, every part of the coconut tree is being used up. So I think it's quite symbolic as well. Um, and to use that in representation, recreate this form of the, the, the mother. Yeah? Um, so the, the, the saying he was saying, if, just in case you don't understand, untung, untung sabut timbul, untung, sabut timbul. Uh, untung, untung batu, batu tenggelam. tenggelam. So untung, in the sense, I think it has to do with opportunity and luck. Chances Chance and, and, luck, and luck, yeah, I guess. So it means that if you are like, uh, if your fortune is like that of a coconut husk, then you would float. Um, and if not, uh, if it's like that of a stone, then you would sink. Yeah, so it has that saying. La, so it's inspired by, by that, that saying as but well. But the, the, the purpose is quite subjective also. Right. Sometimes you not float, sometimes you not sink. Sink. It yeah. depends. Yeah, it's yeah. how you survive. So it's like chance. La. Chance. Yeah, again. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so do we have any questions uh, from the audience? Yes. Um, Sorry. Thank you. Um, you did mention that this is meant to be, uh, it, it is meant to represent a head of a mother. I'm just trying to see what the structure looks like. So the bottom part should be the neck. And then, is it like the back 
is the yeah, mother you can, bun? Uh, you can walk around and see the, okay. the, 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 the real world. Yeah, you can be, okay. like, and you're allowed to touch. Yeah, you can touch. And you at the back, you. at the back is a sanggul. It's a normal yeah. um, sanggul. Yeah, the, they did, she would bun her hair up, so that's what the knob behind is supposed to reflect or, or suggest, yeah. So the face is the side and the hair is... Yes, so the, the orientation uh, as a side profile would be like this, so you could get the bun in the, the, the hair, yeah. Are there any other questions? Yeah. So I feel this is going to be most of stupid these questions. Um, so um, yes, I, I just I can see that there is a shape, right, the shape of the head. Um, is this with hijab or not with it? <laughs> no, this is without hijab. This is normal um, uh, in, in the house, not going out uh, no, with the sanggul. Uh -uh. But here they put it, do not touch the artwork. <laughs> Actually can touch. Actually can touch. <laughs> yeah, there's a sign on the bottom that says do not touch, but you're allowed to touch to feel the material and to connect with the it. The sign is also still subjective, you, but you can <laughs> <laughs> How long take me? It take me around one whole month to do this. To, to, so how about the collection of the material? The collection is material quite funny because during I, I want to collect the uh, sabot. It was difficult, right? It's I, difficult I heard because it's flat. <laughs> Right, flood in Klang because I get the, all the material from Klang and suddenly flood, I cannot get the material so I have to wait another two weeks until the new uh, sabot coming in and I, right. I'll take half lorry of, of sabot. sabot right and, and it is too much but now left over a lot of in my studio now okay. I don't know I'm gonna produce new work, I think. Okay, with it as well, lah. Okay, all right. Can you talk us through a little bit about the process of how? What I mean, what's the core of it, and the assembling of the 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 the. the I got the, structure. The structure. Of, I got three separate structure of for for this work, and then because my studio the situation, because my studio is on the third, third floor, floor. <laughs> on the right. third floor, uh, shop house with the stairs, no leaf, you know. And then um, I, I have to produce, uh, I'm going to make it in a three separate section and then here I install it. Oh, you, so, you, so you made install it, it, install it here? here. Mm -hmm. Alright, alright. Uh, you have a question? Actually, you asked it already. Oh, okay. Right, right. All husks from within? No. I got a metal, metal structure inside and also some fibre structure inside. And there's a, is this styrofoam bit as well? You said styrofoam that is on, on for, the, uh, uh, for the outside structure, but uh, uh, inside got metal and everything. Right. But it's quite light. Okay. I okay. can carry from that floor of uh. my studio. <laughs> right, okay, okay. Um, are there any questions? Are, are there anyone with questions? Um, I, I've got one myself, like, as you are doing this, what's the main thing? Like, as you are creating this here, was it more contemplative or emotional as you're weaving? Do you, do you kind of try and remember your mother? Was it more an emotional piece as you are piecing this together? Or was it more methodical and, and you know, mathematical and you're like calculating and, you know, more indulgent in the process of the, the more technical side of the process? Yeah, for me, the technical part is, is very organic. The material is very organic, and then the, based on my drawing, actually, it's not. There's no mathematics on my work. Yeah. And then when when the management asked me during uh, uh, the process, they said uh, uh, they asked about the the height, the size, the weight right, of the. Right. I said I don't know. Which are all very technical <laughs> questions. It's it's right. very organic, and then um, I said. It's based on my drawing. I simply do it. It's like it's like a painting. You know what I mean? Right. And, uh, right. So I, I I do a structure, and then after I put a sabot, I don't know how big it's gonna be. Mm. And uh, it's separated into three pieces, and then come came here, and then I install. Then I know. Right. Then, uh, but I I I know about the size everything. And right. it's very organic and yeah. um, 
Okay, okay, that's interesting because yeah, I think sometimes when you go to an art show, they will ask you, what's your dimension? What's your format gonna be like? And these are questions that are so technical that, um, but we, we tend to forget that sometimes the artist works very organically. And I think it's really nice because you have um, also the whole idea of, of uh, rural crafts or craft in the kampung, you don't actually kind of imagine a dimension. It's like the way we, we masak in the kampung. Measurements, how much gula, how much you know, sambal to put in, it's all agak-agak. So I guess the whole agak-agak thing is also kind of doing it. And, and um, I read in your essay about your work, your, your mom was also quite uh, instrumental in uh, being an advisor on how you treat the materials. Can you talk about that? A lot of that? my work, uh, my, my mom, some of my work my mom involved lah. Yeah. Let's say in my work in uh, last Young Contemporary Art Award, I yeah. do uh, the flag, you know, with the um, jute from Paddy Field, you know. My mom is a supplier who buy the thing for me. Right. Yeah, she, she, and then some of the work, let's say I do an installation in Penang, I I plant a paddy, so my mom is a... Is a um, Teach me how to to do like. You know? I see. I see. So in this case, I think she was trying to also. She was trying to advise you on how to advise dry. Advise me, and then she said, "How long is it gonna last?" The question. I said, "I, I said I don't know." Okay. <laughs> All right. That's interesting because I think there is also a beauty in in having in Southeast Asia. Most of our arts are quite ephemeral. They they don't they are not made to last, and I think there's a beauty in that as well as like street art, something that kind of is here and then it's gone the next moment. Uh, are are we? Uh, do we have any more questions from the audience about uh, Budin's work? How are the husks stuck together? Oh, how how are the husks stuck together? So we've talk, talk, uh, we asked about the technical. First, I I I use I jait, you know. I mean, at first, and then suddenly it's not practical. Halfway, I just uh, put screw, and then for the technical last technical, I put glue. Right, right. So, so it's very organic <laughs> way. There's no mathematics. Yeah, it's. I guess it's. There's no like much of repetition of thing, right? It's kind of as you go, you develop your method and whatever works, works and yeah, makes the husk stick over the structure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um, probably we have. You can have a go around the structure if you want. Um, before we move on next to Sharon Chin's work, yeah. It's meant to be a nose. Yeah, if you, I put it this way because if you sit here, you can see the silhouette of a nose, the mouth, and the sanggul. Telinga tak buat, supposed to buat and tak buat. And then I start with the drawing. I start with the drawing, but to transfer this material to drawing is very hard. But I try my best lah. Can see the silhouette. Very fine one. Oh, okay. <laughs> the drawing, you know what I mean? The Easier. The sango is very nice. Actually. That is the sango. Yeah, yeah, so I'm assuming this, the nylon string, the jahitan method lasted until here and then yeah, you and don't then, see then. it anymore and then there's the screw and then the glue. <laughs> okay. All right. That's interesting. Uh, I have a question. Hi. What is uh, the meaning of Ibu Pagun? Pagun, is Pagun means still. Still and so, calm. Alright, so Ibu Pagun, just going back to that, uh, the title, Ibu is like mother. Um, Pagun is like still, there's a stillness, a calmness to it, right? The tranquility. And I think, th does that probably relate to your calls to your mom, you know, feeling a bit more tranquil, trying to negotiate with how the pandemic is going on? And For does me, it relate it's to how that? he's. She's very calm. She's very calm. relaxed. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So and, te and, yeah. and technically, this work is not moving. It's still. All right. <laughs> yeah. So so the work is not moving. He he just said this work is not moving. It's pretty still. It's pretty tranquil. Yeah. And I think the the just the mass of it, right? The weight of the the, the subject, really anchors the the whole uh, sculpture. So we're going to move now into the gallery space. Um, to the left. I I will bring you guys uh, to Sharon Chin's work. Sharon? Yeah. Hi, Sharon. Um, okay, now Sharon's work uh, titled Rich Country. Am I right? Rich Country. 
Um, Hello. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not just here. It's interspersed throughout the gallery in small little clusters and I would say constellations. Um, um, and uh, you can find them around the gallery. All right. So yeah, Sharon, uh, take it away. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Sharon. I drove here from Port Dixon um, this morning. <laughs> uh, I'm actually uh, a city girl, yeah, but I moved to Port Dixon about 10 years ago. Oh, uh, I got flowers from my friend, Siming, so I'm, I'm going to put them on. Um, yeah, so I mentioned uh, Port Dixon because uh, that's become my home, uh, kind of uh, migrated away from the urban center uh, to a smaller town. Actually, Port Dixon is not that small. Uh, it's probably semi-urban and uh, it's a resort town, but it's uh, how many people grew up uh, going to Podixon, the beach in Podixon? Quite a few people. Quite a few people. Yeah, it's changed a lot over the years. Um, it's also an oil and gas town. I'm not sure if people know that, uh, but there are two oil refineries and one coal power plant there. And uh, <coughs> sorry, a little bit nervous, and it's very cold in the gallery. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I live uh, 200 meters away from an oil refinery. So that's just to give everybody an idea of the place uh, where this work comes from and where I can say that I also come from now. Um, so the artwork is called Rich Country and uh, it has a double meaning. Yeah. I, I think most people, when they hear the title, rich country, they think about uh, a nation. Yeah, so do you think Malaysia is a rich country? Yes. Yes. Why? <laughs> Why? I, I'm interested to know, yeah. Is it uh, the natural resources or yes. is well, that? Why is the natural resources? Natural resources, like oil. Uh, yeah, definitely. Oil, okay. Were you thinking of something else? Oil palm, oil palm, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the road, uh, the Seremban, um, the Seremban Podixon Highway, yeah, it's oil palm all along, all along there, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm, about oil palm, yeah. Actually, that comes. Uh, the richness of that has financed so much uh, of our country. Uh, so much uh, building and construction, actually. I, I, I mean, I'm not an economic expert, so I, I, I don't know uh, exactly how the wealth has uh, flowed from the ground uh, into a building, a building like this, maybe, or develop other development projects like Saramban 2. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a connection. There must be, right? Yeah. So um, this artwork... Uh, I was thinking about those things, about wealth, about kekayaan, what that means, where it comes from. And uh, I made this work during the pandemic. Uh, they started out as little prints. So um, this artwork is actually a printmaking technique. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if... Uh, is, are, are we f I think, yeah, familiar uh, the, with the, printmaking? Um, yeah. I think, uh, I, think, uh, I think you would need to explain your process because mm. it's not just the conventional sense of printmaking. You're using a very peculiar part of uh, the Tetra Pak in order to get the prints there. So can you walk us through a, a little bit about your process? I mean, these are um, recycled paper, I presume, right? Um, it has a different texture to it. And uh, actually, the paper, is, the paper is not recycled. Um, it's handmade paper. I import it from Thailand because I cannot find handmade paper here uh, of this quality. So it's made from mulberry and uh, 
expensive Japanese paper is also made from mulberry, but this is a Southeast Asian product. Okay, so any specificity, why, why, why so specific? I mean, um, is there a reason why you wanted that type of paper and that use of paper? Yeah, so the printmaking technique uh, is, um, we, it, it's, uh, it's not digital printing, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's fine art uh, printmaking. So there's many different techniques. Um, the artwork by Pangrok Sulap on, this, uh, on that wall, the big uh, banner, that is a printmaking technique, uh, but that uses wood cut. So you carve into the, the design into the wood, you put the ink on, you put the cloth on, and then you print from there. So, uh, it's the same idea, but it uses this uses a different technique. In taglio printmaking, um, it means that uh, intaglio means guris in Malay. Uh, no, intaglio is a Italian for uh, scratching or guris in Malay. So it's about scratching into a surface. Okay, you scratch a line into the surface, then you put the ink. Uh, on the surface, and the ink will go inside the line. And then you put the piece of paper on top, and then you uh, put pressure, either through a printing press, which is just a roller, it creates pressure, which will transfer the ink onto the paper. Mm. So uh, that's the technique. So it's quite it's quite unique because Pangrok Sulap's one, you act the, the the surface that you do not carve, that's the one that catches the ink and transfers. Mm -hmm. But in Intaglio, it's different. The, the the parts that actually get the ink are the uh, the part you carve out, right? Yeah. So right, so, okay, okay, yeah. right. And what can you tell us about what's depicted on uh, these little prints there? And and there are only as I mean as much as you have. Almost how many pieces do you have? About thou uh, a few hundred or <laughs> <laughs> uh, around the gallery. There's three hundred. There's three hundred. Yes. 300. <laughs> um, and they are of. I, I guess some of them repeat themselves, right? But what what are they? Can you tell us a bit about them? Um, so what's depicted on the prints is uh, soil microorganisms. So from the smallest, like bacteria. Uh, to higher order organisms uh, like protozoa uh, that so uh, bacteria are, are single cell some of them yeah most of them many of them and then there's protozoa there's nematodes there's fungi and we go uh, more and more complex uh, life forms like ants like millipede uh, and uh, yeah so there's 30 species of soil microbes, uh, but each one is repeated 10 times. So that's how we get 300, 300 right, prints right. around the gallery. And these, these uh, specific microbes or microorganisms, the little uh, small insects, they, 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 what do they mean to you in terms of the artwork? They are part of um, the things that would uh, enrich the, the, the soil and part of enriching the soil in which we kind of pillage lives. Is that, is that what it's supposed to uh, mm. represent? Um, well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back to like uh, the personal. So it's actually from uh, gardening. And uh, um, being more in contact with the land uh, after it takes a long time to have a connection with the land, I think a, a relationship, especially uh, growing up in the city, yeah, and then moving. Uh, so I've lived in Podixon for maybe ten years, yeah, and uh, it really takes for for me anyway. Uh, it was a long journey, and uh, it took such a long time, and. Because of the pandemic, I was, I had to stay put. So I didn't. Uh, I've I've always travelled back and forth. My family is here, and you know, artwork, the art scene, and everything is here. So kind of live in two worlds. But uh, because of the pandemic, then I I really inhabited uh, my my place, and uh, yeah, discovered so many things uh, just by staying put. And also uh, by going to certain places that uh, I like again and again. So uh, there's one particular beach that I like, uh, and I just keep on going there again and again. So uh, before I might have thought of, oh, I'm going to nature, I'm going to the land. Then it's like 
I'm going outside, you know? It's always like a trip outside. But this is like coming home. It was like coming home. So uh, there's a richness there that I can't describe. Uh, and it, it uh, yeah, it's, a, it's about relationship with the land and then discovering what the land can teach me. So uh, it's not about like trying to make a map like make a message about the land, about like, you know, we have, uh, it's, it's more listening and interacting, um, like uh, um, seeing, for example, like gardening, how long it takes for something to grow. Uh, you'd be very surprised, it actually takes a long time. Yeah, uh, but it also doesn't take as long as we think. So it's about finding the, the timing also, timing about of things. Uh, we always say like, slow down, slow down, you know, from the city we want to slow down, but then when we slow down, then it feels too slow, but actually there's a time, a, there's, a, there's a timing that, that can feel not too fast and not too slow. When you need to be slow, you are slow. When you need to be fast, then you really need to be fast. Yeah, some, that's one of the uh, lessons, I guess. And another, the, lesson that I got from the land and interacting with the soil is about diversity. Yeah, and uh, how diversity is the thing that makes soil alive. Um, so this has only 30 species and only 300 prints, but in one handful of soil, do you know how many life forms there are? Yeah. Uh, uh, easily a thousand. Thousands? Yeah, Thousands. I would think. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, so the, how many people are there on Earth right now? About seven billion? Eight billion? I think we're approaching eight, yeah? Approaching, yeah, by 20. Yeah, we're approaching eight billion. Um, so in one handful of soil, uh, living soil, that means rich soil, uh, soil that is alive, there's six billion life forms. Billion. Yeah, one handful. Segenggam uh, tanah. Yeah. So think about that in terms of scale. And if you look at some images of a soil microorganism in the microscope, it is amazing because it looks like the stars, some of them. Yeah, the images that come out, it looks like the, the universe. So there, there is strange, um, strange differences in scale, but there's similar Patterns. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I, mean I, I kind of inadvertently used the word constellation just now to the kind of describe the way you, you kind of scatter and distribute them. I guess that's what you were trying to also convey. I mean, it's not a conscious decision. Okay, I'm going to do a, a, a triangular one here and then, you know, a, one with lines over there. It's kind of random as you place them around the gallery. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're here to take questions. Uh, anyone has questions about the artwork? Um. I have been following your practice on Instagram, so I have also looked into some other um, prints that you have made. I was wondering if you would consider um, conducting printmaking workshop in KL. <laughs> yeah, sure, of course. But, but Please say yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's nice if you come to PD as well. Yeah, my, my, my studio is there, my press is there, and I, I welcome you very much, yeah. <laughs> Any questions from anyone? No? Um, okay, I think uh, we can now move on to the next work uh, by the Mahmeri group. So, uh, Inchek Rashid, uh, the name of your ensemble or your group is Kumpulan Okir Kita. Am I right? Am I pronouncing that right? Yes. Kita. Uh, Club Kebudayaan Mahmeri. And uh, this is the uh, artwork uh, that your, your, your team produced. It's called Hatat Yud, right? Yeah, so this is Rashid. Uh, yeah, you can uh, proceed to talk about your artwork. Thank you, Eugene. I have to wear this for, yes. <laughs> for the tradition. Yeah. And you, if you go to Mamari, you get this. Everyone, a visitor is required to wear this. And you have to put it on until you finish it. And don't throw it away. That's very, uh, uh, very bad. Um, you either return it or you take it back with you. That's the tradition. That's how they say uh, welcome. So this is a different 
uh, environment altogether. The memory is only 4,000 of us, excluding me. <laughs> Although I've been there for 31 years, um, I'm not a memory. Uh, I'm still considered as an outsider. But then, as an outsider, you have this advantage. You have um, different outlook, the different thoughts about what they do. Being one of them, you have to comply with those, um, uh, the system which they abide by. So that's the difference. Uh, you can convert to any religion you like, but then the, the culture, they have to follow. If you don't, uh, then you will suf suffer consequences. That's what they believe. All right, the display here, the installation which I call Hatat Jod, is not the name of the ceremony. The ceremony is called Lanchang. It is similar to the song, the Malay song, Lanchang Kuning. If you listen to the lyrics, you'll see the similarity. It is, Yod means send off. Yeah? Yeah, so this is um, a system of healing where they practice. I've only seen it done twice, uh, but I've, um, I'm allowed to see the preparation of this uh, equipment. So this is used for sending off something, normally a disease. If you have suffered a severe disease, you have done wrong somebody, you have done your confession like the Christian faith, so this is how it's done. Uh, you, this is not voodoo stuff, yeah? although they have other uh, parts. There are three stages of healing. One is, is the sembuang, which they, they encourage the disease to go. The second thing is the ancha, where they force it to go. If they, that doesn't work, then they send it off. But this is a big thing. It requires hundreds of people to do this. <laughs> I can't send this on my own. You need the whole village to, um, to support you, agree with you to send it off. Then only you do. So some suggest to me, uh, let's send off the COVID with this. <laughs> okay. It comes from the top. It's not uh, he is. <laughs> so uh, we are considering um, to do this because COVID is now not ending. <laughs> it is, you know, it is becoming something else. I'm, I'm, I, let me put it in simple words. You know, I don't want to, uh, because if I do technically, it is sometimes unfair. Because the terms they use is an old language, uh, which refers to something similar that we do. So healing to them means uh, cure, not a Panadol kind of thing. Yeah? Panadol is something temporary. We remove something, that's why we can't feel the disease, but this is not. Um, the preparation of these needs, you can see, you know, it will take a few months. And this, as Eugene referred to as effigies, yeah, has become an art now. So if you Google Mahmeri, you'll see those award-winning sculptures, 100,000, 50,000, I heard. Um, it started from that. And uh, what I observe it is so many interesting things which is in the in the making. So it, that's why it took me thirty years, but only two opportunities to see it. The reason why we cannot see it now because this has to be sent off. So uh, the audience can only see it for five minutes, can take photograph for five minutes, and that's it. Uh, the ceremony cannot be photographed. Um, just just to clarify, Ancient Rashid, so we actually, you actually had one that was uh, actually built and then um, sent off. So that um, our eyes cannot, you know, lay, uh, be, be, uh, we can't see the, that one. The process um, you cannot yeah, see, you can't but see you can that. see when it's displayed like this. Right. One time. So this is, uh, I would say, a, a duplicate of uh, uh, the other one, right? Um, that one has been made and sent off and, you know, you, people were able to take pictures with it for five minutes and then they send it off. Um, yeah, so this is actually a duplicate here that's uh, here to stay, I guess, yeah? Okay, let me go back into the beginning a bit. Why I got involved in this, why I can do this, why 
you can't simply do this <laughs> to them. They won't allow you. So they say it's dangerous and also. Um, I started off about 40 years ago. I, I like to art. Such. I'm not an artist <laughs> until three years ago. <laughs> this is. Um, I travel everywhere and like museums. I've been most museum. I, I walk back to Malaysia when I at the end of my journey. I got a degree in computer science. <laughs> so <laughs> for ten years I work and then art. So I, I, when COVID came, I don't know what to do. I can't go out from the house. I can't even go to the center, Kerry Island. So there's two things which I can do in the house. Uh, during my journey, I, I traveled five years. I learned two things. I, one is the museum. I like to see art. I, I've been most museum in a lot of countries. Um, and I study music. Uh, <laughs> this was... A coincidence when the Beatles was in India and all this time. So I sat under a tree and for six months and learned <laughs> to play the sitar. <laughs> so I brought it back with me. So I look at the sitar and I look at the, the art bit. So, much. so after two weeks, locking up in my room, I said, like, do the, the art bit. So there were my, because the music will not bear anything. Probably I'm the first one to do the sitar that time. But I can record it and you can listen to it. But that's about it. But art is, is this. So for, for two years, I studied how to carve. Ah, this is some, <laughs> it's dangerous, one thing. And it is, you know, at this age, it's got to be very hard. You have to be very young and very sharp. So the eyes are not very good. So I, have, I can carve all this and better and bigger. So what I've done is now, I carve something non-destructive. What they do is they have to chop down trees and things. But they have rituals for that. I took the bits and pieces which they left over and I carve. So I'm just about to finish the entire collection which will be on display. You'll be surprised as how um, out of this. As for example, I'm doing an exhibition in National Museum of Singapore. Somebody was interested in this. <laughs> Not everything. The curator was here, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a different one, right? Yeah, that you're going to refer to? Only one. Um, she was interested in just <laughs> that one. The Palimbai is the head of the, the entire ceremony. He mm -hmm. dictates for three months. He's, he doesn't eat, he doesn't, you know, he, he concentrates on this communication between the other world which they believe. Uh, the system of belief is not like us. Um, we, we, we believe in the afterworld. And there is not, uh, they, there's no an afterworld for them. It's a parallel world. So the world of the spirit is uh, generally, in essence, is, is animism. Yeah? So they were interested in that particular man, but that particular fabric. Oh. <laughs> I think uh, if you heard of William Fakoha, he commissioned... Uh, Chinese, some Chinese artists from mainland China and also locals, I think, um, to draw out uh, botanical plants and herbs and things from Tanah Melayu. No? <laughs> and this was auctioned, you know, the painting, 460 paintings was auctioned in Singapore. And the two guys from, one from Singapore and Malaysia had a betting session, who will win so they went off, the Malaysian guy got it. But he was late in collecting the 460 painting, the guy from Singapore. So it's now on display in the National Museum of Singapore, titled Roots. Um, one, I did. One painting, yes, I deciphered the painting I got, because it's about this plant. It's pokok terap, you know, the plant that have their sap, you're talking about the fabric, yep, the, fabric. the fabric in yes. which it's made of. The, the, I, I, the I just, from all this, I just, I'm giving you the, everything to me. It took 30 years to decipher. That's why I dare do this. It's not dangerous to me. It is informative. It's good to know another culture and so many things we can learn from this. And this has become world-renowned. 
So I got 11 uh, accreditation from UNESCO that states that look at the bone, <laughs> one piece of, that's one piece of uh, wood. Yeah. It's, it's made of one solid wood. Yeah. Right? And mahogany can be found in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, so it's made of nyere, couples, is it? Is yeah, it nyere, nyere is, uh, this is the sister one. Uh, it's lighter tone. You see all the greens. Beautiful. Why are we destroying this? You know, a lot of cases. So it goes beyond this. So I'm doing work on the wood itself. You know what? After 30 years looking at the wood, I know more than what is written in Wikipedia, you know. <laughs> because so many things is not, not quite Because there. You, you work with it, yes. you smell it, you yes. experience it. Yeah. Um, you, you, you were using the word occasionally dangerous in yeah. terms of working. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Like, I uh, think in the audience mind, what, what do you mean by dangerous? All right. Is it a spiritual you know, thing that you need to observe? Or is it a technique? You know, can you ex elaborate on that? Yeah, okay. Um, you, you, you know, when you say the, the question, simple question which they, my students ask me, does it work? <laughs> Sending off. Right? They, 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 like, they like the middle bit, the voodoo stuff. You know, can you kill somebody? You know, like, uh, this is, I'm having a Japanese class from Osaka University uh, this weekend. They, they are there, you know, the whole class is there. So, I'm <laughs> so they ask me this question because I'm learning more from all. Uh, these people. You see, it is, the answer is my, in my latest book, I've just finished a book that tell you all about the Mahmeri. Because the medical, medicine and uh, modern and uh, the traditional medicine is, is, uh, has its parallels. Uh, it will, if it's meant to kill somebody, it will. Uh, you see, but there are ways of doing it. It's not easy, you know? like sending off like this. If you, you know, the whole world feel trouble, isn't it? So one of the aspect of medication, medicine is the psychological bit. You know? So if you can heal the psychological bit, you'll be strengthened inside. Uh, this is the philosophy of the whole thing. So when you think of it, when I spoke to um, psychologists and I spoke to medical experts. So maybe that is the, I mean, you heal yourself, you make yourself stronger. I have back pain. You know, the doctor say you strengthen your back muscle. Mm. Oh, no, no need to, you know, operate or, you know, <laughs> alter the, the, the muscle itself will heal you. Uh, so this is the philosophy behind. When you're all strengthened and then you, you will heal yourself. I think the, 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 the belief system behind the uh, Mahmeri cosmology is, is very different from, I think, what we are used to in the Occidental, you know, more contemporary kind of uh, approach of stamping out a disease and crushing it. Yes. This is um, because you be the, the Mahmeri believe that they come from the disease or yes. something evil like that comes from a different uh, world. And so we cannot stamp it out. We send it off. You know, we, we actually convince it, we negotiate with it to actually be sent off uh, and to return to where it came from, right? All right. So the, the system has been taught to me for 30 years. Wow, how is done? done? What is the formula for all this? So, so it took me, that if you count the number here, you'll see the odd numbers. Uh, yes, can, can you uh, <laughs> yes. elaborate on that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the odd number. Yeah, uh, which, it, the, 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 traditions and the practices of the Mahmeri has got to be observed. So experts fail to, um, or scholars fail to see this because they are temporary. They come for one year or three months and they write things, you know. Uh, I started off like that. I want to do my postgraduate. You know, I start 20 years ago writing about, I know on my first year of the, I said, this is not, you know, it's just complying to this I call them, I mean, they don't know a thing, but you have to comply to their requirement. Uh, call this another name similar to that culture, this and then, then you will comply to your whatever degree you are. Or oh, this is not it, you know, you have to be fair. When I submit to UNESCO this object, one of the criteria is not authenticity, is one thing, fair. 
Are you doing justice? So most of the scholars now, sad to say, you know, they become experts. They are rich by nature, mm. their knowledge and also the the compensation they get. You no, know, every talk they get a lot of money and things. But you look at the pictures in the book. You go and find those pictures. You see those guys are very poor. They still the same. The community is poor. Or oh, this is what I am not allowed to do. So this is the problem. So I, for 31 years, I'm still there. I have to eat their food, you know, talk like them, and understand, uh, share their passions and everything. So this is why I'm allowed to see a photograph and do. Uh, uh, so this is the thing. But sadly, the guy passed away mm, uh, during, <laughs> during COVID. Yeah, that guy there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what I believe is I'm in constant uh, communication with them. Th that is what they, they think, it's because they have got spirits. But for me, the memories of the times which I share with him, uh, the song and the rhyme he sing, you know, but most of them I cannot do. Because communicating with spirit is something I cannot do. But uh, So this is how this complex thing is about just one single item. Mm. But I put it into one book uh, over the three years period and it's completed. And uh, the previous book is on origami, yeah? that one. It's in three languages. The final one is in Japanese, which I'm working with also. It's done. Um, uh, this one is telling you all, tell all. Uh, this book, um, the language, the custom and tradition is all about the sculptures, the stories. But we've, when, when scholars write, for example, one big mistake we do, when I say this guy here, then, says, then they will tell you what the experience of this guy. Maybe he, he, his cousin drowned and then he dreamed of something and then that story is some calamity is of some, some sort. But we fail to see as an artist where we heard you talking about, you say, personal thing. Mm. Uh, that sketch me. Why don't we ask the artist at that time the personal thing? Right. Why, why do you draw the eyes in color? Why black? Why the yellow? Mm. What's that bead? Eh? Ah, Can this, you talk a bit about yeah, the bead because is, it's, a, it's a seed? Ah, right? yes. This is the thing that we want to. Uh, no, from artists like Michelangelo or Picasso, or, you know, Leonardo. We want to know why he does that. So the seed is now almost gone, mm. and the seed is a natural bead. It is a fruit, it's a, it's a seed from a plant called Creole, or some called by different names, a different type, right? It used to grow on the side of the river, it's a bamboo species. When you pluck off the seed, it's a natural hole there. Right. And it lasts almost forever, you know, this thing. Uh, these are the things which, um, uh, the criteria, if you want to go and meet your, the other side, you wear that, he will be pleased. So the idea of having this, because of all these things that, that, that spirits on the other side will be pleased. So that's the rule. So if it's displeased, uh, then for some reason, because you don't have the pair inside there, if you have a one male, you must have a female. Uh, so so you, the counting was be odd numbers. It's the preferred way. No, uh, I was use preferred in their language. It's, it's, so, so it's different. It's not like taboo to do this. You cannot, no, there, there, are, there are different words. That's why it takes a long time to understand uh, any of this. But now that we have understood, and I have seen it work, uh, so the answer does it work. You know? So it's in the book, but believe me or not, it worked for a very, very grand occasion. Mm. Somebody wants to remove half of the island, wow. including the place where this was celebrated. Right. And this place was featured in National Museum in Singapore. The, the actual rituals that was done, okay. courtesy of me, <laughs> I give them all the materials here. It was there. Right. I'm yet to see it on the closing. I, I, I haven't been there yet. Um, and it worked. 
So it's in my book, in my bag. Okay, so we <laughs> so, will need to read that book. Uh, so uh, yeah, and the so, story was that someone wanted to capitalize on part of the island for yeah, something else. For for, something, I guess yeah. you know, a big monetary one. purposes yeah. and, and and they. <laughs> I was sitting there. Nobody tell me what was going on. Right. For two months, I saw them working and working and working, right. and this guy was in. He says he's in trance, right. he's connecting to the other world. So don't ask me anything. Right. <laughs> you know, like okay. so it went on and on. And when I piece the thing together over the COVID, right. the dates, the date was the numbers. <laughs> the funny about them, they can only count to three. One, two, three. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> so it is again, you know, you need to really know uh, their, their stuff before you can say anything. That's why scholars got it all messed up. Um, they think that the belief system is like this and that. No, I mean, um, now I've got even the symbols extracted from all these figurines. Mm. There are 460 types of these figurines. The, the, the beautiful one, eh? this one is for five minutes and gone. Mm. That's why it's not, you can't see this anywhere. Uh, so what is left is the expressions of what the artisan do to sell. Oh, this is the good bit. Yeah. When they want to sell something, it's, or this one is for giving away. So it has to be very detailed, the colors, you know, this is a, so what's existing that you can see with the Mahmeri right now? It's a lot more refined, you're saying, and these are the, the, oh, yes. more, the more crude ones which will be sent off. Yes. All right. Uh, it has to be very fast. Right. Or you cannot keep it, you know, you want to do it the best, you know, in one week. If you can do this in one week. But with 200 people, I, I'm, I mean, you will be surprised. You look, look like these people, they don't have anything else to do. But they're very serious. Uh, they're gonna, somebody's going to take half of the island away. Mm -hmm including this sacred site where they're performing this. this where they ride. do the sending of the, the yes, hatayu. Yeah. yeah. And then the coincidence, when it finished, and this guy went up with, with it. Oh, <laughs> so, oh the Palimbai, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, I mean, okay. it's all, the photograph is in the book. You can see him alive and dead as well. So it, it doesn't, because I, I posed this question to him. Can I photograph you when you're dead? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I when you, I what we learn in art is you ask everything. You from you have to know. You have to know. That's why art is like an obsession. You start drawing. I can draw, but my problem is I don't know which hand I can draw with. When you give me a football, I don't know which leg. So I got a big problem, you know, with with studying. That's why I travel the world, I go on and on and on to find this, only to find it on Kerry Island. And, and I write the book, you know, I, I cut and paste, you know, I got about a million photographs. <laughs> uh, when somebody has said, can you give me a good photograph or something, I look like him. Which one of the millions? <laughs> I can see it for months and look and... and um, maybe we open uh, the floor to questions anyone might have. Yeah, if I go specific, it won't end for the yeah, day. There's yeah. so many things. Okay. Yeah. I know why rooster instead of other animals. Okay, why rooster instead of... No, that's why you're going to ask oh. the Palimbai. Yeah, he it, prescribed it, it. Yeah, he will, for that particular occasion, he will have these visions. So it doesn't have any particular meaning or symbols for Mamela? No, no, no. It has to be following the messages from the other. The, oh, the right. way it can come is, the obvious way is the dream. The mamai, they call it. Uh, dreams are the communication. Uh, there's somebody who wrote about the dream people, about the, the indigenous people. But they, that is all according to other expert rubbish. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, it doesn't work that way. This, this uh, memory people, the dreams are actually messages and it is, there is a, the rule to it. There is, the science has to be repeated and then it's got to be So disturbing. it doesn't necessarily need to be a, a, a rooster? It has, you have seen, uh, might you yes, have yeah. seen other versions? Yeah, of other it? animals and other, other without as well. Uh, colors also, there's no fix and it's different every time. Yeah. 
but the law, the rule is if you count this is 13 there, yeah, and right. that has to be odd numbers. That's the preferred way. No, it's not tabu or anything. You will, uh, uh, but if you do the right way and your 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 hands are clean, say we say, and your heart is you know pure. Um, this. A any other questions? Thank you. So, um, well, I just happens to be in uh, one of the museum in Korea. Um, there, there was artifacts about the funeral culture of uh, about three to four hundreds of uh, Korea. So, um, the way they do is the uh, they made a sculpture, like a tiny sculpture, um, the things about they want to send with the um, the dead person, like could be food, could be themselves of the face with a crying face. Um, but uh, I, I noticed that most of the sculpture is like uh, to make the funerals into the more the fiesta, like a festival kind, mm -hmm. so that you know they can send their joy all together with the the, the person they loved. Uh, certainly, they are non artist people, I suppose, just a regular person who wants to just put whatever they want to together. Mm -hmm. So um, when I um, happens to see them, um, I notice they're more straight face then, uh, I mean, maybe there must be the uh, reason, so... Um, the neutral in terms yeah, of Yeah, so the more neutral yeah, in terms Rather of than uh, having cry or, or a smile. Right, right so right. I'm just curious about... Uh, is, there, is there a reason why they probably have a, a kind of neutral emotion? Is that a, a convention mm. or, you know, there's, a, 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 I guess, a lack of emotion on the, on the facial expression? Okay, one, one of the things about Preparing a hatat yod is speed. Yeah? I mentioned earlier, the faster you do it, uh, the better. You mm -hmm. cannot put it three months, four months. It's, it's not um, because you, he he it's dangerous for him. He's got to be in trance, right. and, and he will be telling you like that, like this. You know, as you are doing, he will come and he will. Actually, if you prepare like this, um, probably it can be fifty of this. So it could be fifty people, and he will be telling you what to do. So the, I, I think the, what it takes is one is the speed and the second is the tools they use. Uh, they, they cannot use machines or anything, or, no, not on this. So everything has got to be natural because this tree, you can't look at the tree and cut it down. Oh, no. So whatever they can find during that day, so a fallen down tree, that will be. Uh, that. Right. Uh, so this is also, you, see, you can see this is from one piece of tree, isn't it? This white. Uh, this is one piece. So that all, all of the effigies yes, from one, uh, one that's tree. one tree that has fallen down, or they found it on the river or something. So that is going to be the which includes mm. the boat. The the boat. The boat is different. And, right. Uh, the boat is different uh, because this has got to be done very fast. You know? Okay. Uh, okay. Mm. And uh, fifty. Is remember, not not one. Not not this one. It's got fifty two or fifty three. A lot. Uh, if you see the whole two to three hundred people uh, executing this hatat uh, yod. Oh. oh, oh. You will see, and it's, um, I can give you a glimpse of that book. I, I, I took photo, which is allowed by that guy. I, I, I do have a curious question. Uh, among the effigies, we do see little, quite cute little... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Can you talk a bit about that? It's really colourful and... Similar you know, to your Korean culture, when this is not about dying. Yeah? They believe in two worlds, so when you migrate to the other world, so you want to... Uh, you equip the guy with so so it's got to be in pests as well it's got to be animals so more like you know Noah Ark right. or something so like that I, uh, it's very um, so it's it's got to be accompanied so you feel at home right when you go to the other side you do, you might not know what you're going to see but now you know that you can have uh, people accompanying you and you even the food, animals as well animals and light water because they, they kind of remind me of the alebrijes in, um, I think, um, South American culture, spirit animals, really colourful uh, spirit animals. Colourful so, yeah. is to attract the mm. other side. If you make it very dull, of course. So, mm. uh, so the downside to, also in my book, mention to believe in the other world, uh, this is, there are a lot of suicide. Uh, so somebody even sent me a photo, a video, of him hanging himself. Believe me, you see how uh, personal it becomes when you stay with the community and you are an outsider. 
12 o'clock, there was a video sent to me when I was practicing my drawing. He was talking with a rope on his neck. Before I could get there at 6 o'clock in the morning, he was hanging. So for him, it's natural. Nobody cries because he chose. So that's that culture of dying. Yeah? In that book, it's called The Story of Die. Literal translation. But this is not. This is sending off. It's a good thing. So if you have got worries, you've got anything that upset your system, your daily um, uh, routine, you cannot sleep, repeated dreams of the same thing, and then send it off. Um, thank you, Inchit Rashid, for the very, um, very detailed explanation. I think this is one piece that has so many parts to it, and I think you've got more questions for Inchit Rashid, but I think we need to move on to the last piece by Chu Kwan. Okay, we are here at the uh, last work here by Chu Kwan called A Thousand Ways. Um, and yeah, can you take it away? Uh, your, your oh, yeah. Hi everyone. Um, so it is called A Thousand Way. Um, I guess I'm interested with how um, many different approach of transcend, um, transcendental conditions or practice and or the sense of belonging when you are practicing different um, um, way or method to, to reach a certain um, yeah, trans transcendental um, um, situations, I guess. So there's a one um, headphones at the back of the screens. So and and is a collaboration between me and Fu Jing. And I kind of briefed him about my experience when I was a kid and um, regularly visit to the Taoist temples. So they have these rituals of doing a thousand um, bow, um, kow tao. So they need to count um, one to ten for a hundred times and keep on doing the bowing. So when I was a kid, I find it kind of amusing. I keep off laugh of these um, adults when they're doing this gesture. But um, at, the, at the same time, I find that it's kind of interesting that um, I can sense that they are doing something to, to bring, to elevate themselves onto something else. So when I was a kid, there was something that I keep in my mind. And, and during the MCO, um, COVID periods, um, yeah, I was just wanted to do some collaborations with musicians, dancers, um, writers, and animators. So I kind of go back to this experience and, and come, up, yeah, come up with this um, brief um, concept. So I kind of brief the musicians about this idea of, 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 of belief system practice and, and yeah, the, the faith as well, um, or the different practices, so they could come up with something um, um, in their own practice, so I can put it on together as well. Okay, can, can we talk a little bit about the form of your work, like the use of the screen? The projection um, and the painting, it's your painting, right? That's actually transitioning across screen. Is this the first time you're dealing with uh, such mixed media? Or, I mean, you conventionally do a lot more paint work. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, so can you explain a little bit about um, the form that, that we see before us? So the paintings behind the background is actually an actual screen painting. It's a landscape Chinese screen paintings. And... I bring in the idea, so this is the, another element in this piece. So because when I was um, studying about uh, these traditional screens um, in UK when I was doing the residency, um, there's this idea about the old traditional scholar from China. They will always paint the screen on top of the screen painting. So meaning that um, on the physical screen works, they will always um, paint the different scenario um, in their living times. And then they will always have different screen, even multiple screen, meaning that screen in screen in screen. So um, I, I, I think I, I like the idea that they, it is also some form of transcendental uh, approach. They're always not happy with what they already have, but as a ideal um, projections on the screen in the old times. Um, yeah, when the old Chinese painter doing all these screen paintings. Right. 
And and um, when he says screen, he does not mean like the digital screen, but act the actual Chinese screen, right? Um, and it's strange because um, we the, the, the screen is actually one of the first mediums or surfaces they paint on, even before paper or canvases, right? And it seems that we have kind of come full circle and we are kind of, you know, we, we are looking through our screens as well, so there's a, a kind of a metaphor. There. Yeah, it is in fact one of the, uh, the earliest art forms from China, and before they even have this scroll format. Um, yeah, because it, it started as a living um, object, like a furniture, and, and then it, it, it became uh, objects for status representations behind the imperial. And then slowly, because of the it's material, an eminence yeah, to yeah, having a yeah, screen yeah, before yeah. you, right? And then slowly, only the scroll replaced the importance in in instance and art forms, um, because of the convenience and the way to preserve the materials and stuff. Um, so, but when you mentioned about screen of, um, I mean, our phone oh, phone screen, yeah. it, it works as well because um, um, if you think about, we always look into the screen to somehow approach another um, sense of being, of existence. So I think this multi um, meaning of screen, even the, the meaning of blocking something, the screening, mm -hmm. so it also talk about um, yeah, the idea of or, or condition of belonging or, 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 or being, I think. Right. Right. Um, and also, I guess now with um, us transitioning into the idea of the metaverse, I think with screens, within screens, I think that also alludes to that, right? Yeah, um, yeah you want to talk a bit about that as well? So, yeah, um, I mean, it's very simple. Um, human will always try to create another um, plane, another space mm. that is something similar to what we already have. Yeah. But the, the same old problem will always um, surface and it will always be the same thing over and over. Mm. So, Hence the, yeah. almost the interdimensional yeah, repetition. Yeah. So even with a thousand different ways of, 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 of transcendental um, practice or, or methods, mm. I always find that they always go back to the same thing. Right? So that's why I create this um, visuals or experience that you could um, feel. Um, even with the single projections or visuals, it appears on the physicals and then the imaginary and then the virtual um, plane, but everything are kind of the same and repeating. Mm. So yeah, that's basically um, the... I mean, uh, yeah. uh, when, when I was looking, I, I mean, I came about a week ago to, to actually try and experience your work for myself um, in a more quiet space. Um, what, what did you experience? Like, what would you expect out of your audience to ex how to experience your work? Because um, there are speakers behind the screen where you listen on to the music, um, which they will play later on. So, uh, what what's what would you expect out of the audience? Like, what what do you expect them to? Do? Is there an expectation even for them to experience? So because when you go behind, it's a bit like disruptive. You are cut off from the projection. So basically, I, I do have two principles. First, I I would not like the works to appear like a MV for my painting image. So it's, it's very dangerous if you play with the painting image and trying to work with sound and Im moving images. It would easily become like an MV for, for, the, for the paintings. And then secondly, um, i trying to um, approach the installations in the sense that um, it would present as a, close to a theatrical um, experience. Mm. Yeah, meaning that there are lots of information going on, like almost when you're looking at the theater or the play, and then you can only digest or analyze or, or feel it after, after the performance. Yeah, so there's less um, informative um, um, words or, or, or images. They are all a combination of of abstract elements, I call it, even the pieces from Fujing, even the way the choreographer was doing the move, mm -hmm. I, I kind of brief them separately, yeah. and they somehow never really know each other, yeah. and they work on the idea about the faith or the practice um, um, 
belief system separately. Right. And in a way, because I think my background of painting is abstract painting. So the way I make paintings is always spontaneous and always um, go with the flow, follow the drift. So in a way, by collecting all these uh, materials from different talents, um, it kind of provide me um, a totally unknown situation so that later I could um, um, somehow put them together and then make them work in, mm. in, in a way that close to a theoretical experience that I feel. Right. Yeah, at least that could help um, let people to immerse in the work. But then, difference from theatrical experience, the sound and the move and the images is is, is separated. Right. You can see the visuals um, silently, but then you can experience the sound later. Right. So, but then it also um, have this um, contrast of exterior and interior as well. So outside, but then when you go to the sound inside, right. it kind of bring you back to the to the to the. To, to your inner self or something, so you can kind of um, connect the visuals and the sound by yourself and kind of interpret it um, in your own ways or something. Okay, okay. Um, any questions so far from anyone from the floor? No? Not yet? Um, I do have a question, actually, since your musicians are here, I never thought of that, but um, what was your brief to them? Because it, what they're about to play for us is because when I, when I was reading through your title and your essay, it's about rituals and, you know, uh, a ritual in a temple and uh, looking at the art piece, I was, I was trying to negotiate with it and, and see what I get out of it. But um, the, the song that is being played, oddly enough, is, is a bit jazzy. So what's your brief? What was your brief to them? <laughs> um, so, okay, so this installation piece, um, I mean, concept part itself, it's, um, is kind of brief and vague. But then it really important to me because um, it's, a, it's a search or I would say a formal experimentation or uh, 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 yeah, just trying to, to find out a way for collaborations mm. between me and different people. And, and did the, the musicians need to also communicate? Was there an interaction between them and the dancers? No, no, not at so all. So it's like separate. I said, yeah, they they're almost like a different marks that I made at the beginning of the paintings, ah. and then eventually you become the the, the yeah, mediator, the, the, the to, kind of yeah. I see. Or right. like a producer almost, mm, you see, mm, mm. and and yeah, kind of put them out together in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, but we we sort of work around the same um, um, vague concept about something that I mentioned just now. Right. Right. So um, for so for Fujian case, um, it's it's a bit more clear, I would say, because um, there's this idea about a thousand kowtow. Right. So I I the what only only requirements that I, I I ask for is for him to 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 keep on counting one to ten, and then he he could expand from there whatever he, he likes or he wants. Okay. So maybe he would, he would like to share the Yeah, I mean, the the, does the 1 to 10, does it influence your metronomes or, you know, the counting of your beats? Um, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, so... Uh, so Chu Guan approached me asking uh, for me to make a piece, but throughout the piece I have to count. Um, throughout, and in music, uh, it's... In order to interact with other people, we have uh, we count between each other so that we have similar time. Um, and so, in this case, I had to count to a ten to ten a lot of times. Um, so, uh, one thing in music that I'm trying to do is to make things interesting, even though uh, there's a concept happening behind. So, the challenge to me was how do I make this piece sound interesting while I'm counting? because it could get old really fast. Um, and that's where my jazz background comes in, because um, if you listen to the piece later, um, you will see that the counting doesn't necessarily line up with what the music is doing. Um, because I am counting in a different cycle to what the music is playing, and so it only lines up in very weird ways. Um, and I guess that is why I approach this project with that uh, jazz aesthetic, is because a lot of my experience is from um, music where 
things don't necessarily line up. Mm, mm. Okay, all right. Um, any questions before we we allow the musicians? We will end uh, the talk today with um, them playing the piece. Um, but what you hear, you you can go behind after the uh, this uh, talk. Um, to listen because there's more than just the music. There is uh, the counting of the sound. Um, what you call the cow house, right? Okay. All right. Uh, any any questions just before I yeah safely? Okay. So maybe um, so what Fujin is going to play later will be uh, some uh, uh, variations from the piece that he did for the installations, and afterward the uh, second ones would be um, the songs that from his uh, first debut al albums. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Oh. Sorry, I think Chukon is being a bit um, modest um, because the first album, the second piece that I will play, he painted, he, his painting is the album cover. And as you'll see from the two songs, um, so Chukon and I have worked on maybe three or four projects together and you could see how the pieces and our works and collaborations influence the next work. Um, and so the first piece I'll play is the one that you can listen to inside this installation. And the second one is a piece of music that uh, True Kwan's painting also relates to. Unfortunately, you can only view it online, I think. It's called, uh, it's a triptych entitled Do Nothing, Say Nothing, Be Nothing. 